Welcome to Empowerment Radio, another Wednesday. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman Schaub, and today we will talk about lying. Not lying down, but lying in the terms of not speaking the truth, fibbing, distorting, things like that. So today it's all about lying and why, for some reason, we seem to have become a little bit more comfortable with lying and liars. I mean, the presidential election has kind of proven it, right? I mean, when you think about how many fact checkers were clearly stating that the candidates were not really telling the truth, in fact, that they were more playing with the truth, like kids with uh, edge sketches, uh, and still we believed them, still we voted for them, elected them. There was a time when it was actually a big story when a politician lied. Now it seems more to be a big story when a politician is telling the truth. And we are not necessarily on the barricades for that. Well, maybe we are starting to really get upset about it, but on some level there is still a acceptance about lying. That is not only about lying with politicians, but it's also about lying with ourselves, within ourselves. You know, I just talked to our producer and I don't want to make him feel bad, but I asked him, have you lied already today? And he was so courageous and honest to admit that he had. Now ask yourself, have you already at this young day told someone a lie? A white lie, a gray lie, whatever you want to call it, but still you haven't really been in the truth. And then ask yourself, why? Why is it that lying is something that you may feel more comfortable with? You now, when we grew up, it was called liar, liar, pants on fire. Lies make baby Jesus cry. Lies have short legs. Or, you know, when you lie, you get a big nose. Well, with my schnoz, it's definitely something that made me believe I'm a professional liar, just by my looks. But, uh, you know, Lying was really seen as something bad. It's part of the Ten Commandments. You shall not lie. And still, somehow, this whole idea about telling the truth and staying with the truth becomes less and less important. The University of Washington has even started to think about, to uh, invent a program about BS. And it's not Bachelor of Science. It's actually about how we can find uh, BS in the news and when people are talking and uh, also how to invent it, invent it and how to create it. What are the signs? What are we doing in order to tell people lies that are so convincing that, you know, we actually cannot really distinguish them any longer from the truth. So if a very credited university is starting to think about teaching about telling BS, we may have a crisis of truth-telling at our hands. And so this show is all about coming back to the importance of not only telling the truth and the positive effects of that that are not only on a personal level, but also on a level of our entire society, maybe globally, able to make a difference. And it's also about understanding more what are lies about? Why are we lying? What is the, the reason and the benefit from skipping around the facts or the truth and, and have a little bit of understanding and compassion with ourselves? Because too often we are just seeing the symptoms and we are judging and condemning ourselves for whatever we are doing and are telling ourselves we shouldn't, but we are not necessarily illuminating what's underneath it. Where does it come from and, and how can we address those deeper root causes to really stop us from having patterns that ultimately don't serve us? Now, when I was a, a child, I was kind of trained to lie. Lying was almost like the secret code of our family and I think a lot of People can relate to that. I mean, I often hear from my clients that 
Lies were used to keep the peace. Lies were used to not rock the boat or upset the father. And, and that was exactly what happened in my family. My father was a good man and he was certainly someone who has uh, helped a lot of people. But he also had a temper and he could be quite volatile. And if there is something that really he didn't like, some news he had a hard time to stomach, he could explode and he could scare the entire family. So my mother, in her effort to manage him and keep the peace, just told us kids, don't tell your dad or make up a story. And, and that was continuously going on until our adulthoods, until the day he died, pretty much. When I was 16 years old, I remember uh, me and my friend, we were thinking of doing a little adventure in the uh, midterm uh, break and we thought, why not hitchhiking to Paris? Now, of course, we couldn't tell our parents, so we had to tell a lie about going for three days in the depth of the Black Forest and, and camping there. Well, we were standing by the side of the road, scared that someone would know us and someone would discover what we are doing. But thank God nobody did. We were in Paris, but we didn't really enjoy it because the whole time we had, you know, this feeling maybe someone is watching us or we are running into someone. And we both knew the story of a friend who had this amazing idea to drive with his moped 24 hours to Paris and then the moment he was there and he felt all big and free and wonderful, he went up to the Eiffel Tower and on top of the Eiffel Tower, he met someone from our little tiny village, 3000 people. Of course, his parents didn't know. They, uh, these people called them. He was in big trouble, had to take the train back home. We know the story. And so we were just on edge the whole time in Paris, couldn't really relax. And only when we came home and uh, we were told uh, or asked, so how was your camping trip? And again, we had to lie and invent stories. Afterwards, we could really be ourselves again. We could exhale and we could feel a little bit better. So was it worth it? Well, maybe a nice story to tell, you know, your friends, but it's not necessarily something that in the moment I could really enjoy. So. On some level, we know that lying does make us uncomfortable. We know that lying is often also something that can be damaging to relationships. We know that we are, through lying, undermining the trust that other people may have in us and also the trust in ourselves. So why do we do it? What is the reason that we go back into these patterns of lying? And what is actually happening on a subconscious level that gets us to do this? And what are the consequences? Not only the consequences of being found out, but what are the consequences neurologically? What are the consequences in regards to your confidence? And what are the confidence and what are the consequences maybe on a societal level as well, as we can see right now? All of those questions and more we will address when we come back after the break. But before we go there, I also want to invite you to speak up and tell the truth about your lying habits or maybe your stories on when you lied and what happened and how it felt or what your insights are about lying. Why have you done it? Why do you still do it? Why do you feel you can't do without it? Be brave, call in or use the Ask, uh, ask a question chat box on transformationtalkradio.com. It would be really nice to hear from you and to, to have you share honestly your experiences with lying. George Orwell, I think, said that in a time of deception, telling the truth is like a little revolution, a little rebellion. And I think today we can just start with that little revolution of truth telling by calling in and sharing our stories. I'm looking forward to that. And right now we go to the break and we will be right back with more on lying and truth telling. 